Welcome to day 29 of my solo 1,000 mile run across Nepal. Uh, I just stopped here for a break and met some friends, as you can see. <laughs> everyone, everyone is intrigued about uh, the equipment that I'm taking as well, so I take time out to show people how the, the poles that I use, and, and everyone's, <laughs> everyone's interested in the poles, uh, how light they are, the fact that they fold up, and they ask me why I use them generally. People walk here with a stick, but um, I've had a really nice time here. I've had uh, Cha Ming. I've spoken to some friends, met some friends, uh, taken some photos. I'm about 10K into today, uh, so I'll have another break, probably another 10K in. That was such, such a great encounter. Um, I think those people weren't very wary of me at all you know they were most of them were kind of older generation and they were just really curious and and in and interested and they were kind of joking around trying to communicate they they, they knew a little bit of english we, we could communicate common questions are things like am i married how old are my brothers sisters that kind of thing um but yeah lots of equ equipment questions um they were saying you know if i'm if i come back here come and say hello um, I just just took time out to sit down, you know, took a much longer break than I normally would for that kind of snack. But um, it was really worthwhile. Another one of those gold dust moments. Just as I like it when people are kind of being curious about me and asking me questions. Um, I've noticed that when I go into some villages and I, and I see someone kind of doing something that I don't recognise, I'm not sure what they're doing. I ask someone else, that kind of thing. You know, I'm, I'm asking questions as well. Uh, about how they, they go about their lives here. And I can see that that kind of lights people up as well. You know, they, if I ask a question and they understand that I'm interested and I, I want to know what's going on, then they're, they're eager to explain, you know, and they, they go out their way, they put effort into um, explaining what they're doing. Uh, I'll see if I can get a few examples, but again, those kind of moments, I'm in the moment and, I, and I'm not really recording. I can only talk about them after they've happened. Quite like this, this is obviously uh, where a carpenter works. Kind of like logs go in and furniture comes out. I've just stopped here for a break, uh, or I was stopped for a break, uh, and offered some guava. I've never had fresh guava. I think this is guava. Not 100% not certain, but uh, it's just come off all that tree over there. Uh, and we give it a go. Sweet, a little bit sharp, quite nice. This is my new friend for today. He's a retired school teacher. And he was retired in now. Four days ago? Four days ago. Uh, uh, uh. Here is the gut tree. So this is, this is what I wanted to show you. Um, this tree here, uh. this tree here, um, apparently from, from using the actual uh. trunk uh. of the tree, uh. that's what, um, I don't, I'm not sure how they process it, but that's what they get the powder, the red powder for the Hindu this is red, Burma tree. red dot. I've always been wondering, uh -huh. so now I've got my answer. This is the, he has a garden full of lots mm. and lots of different varieties of uh, trees and vegetables uh, and fruits and he we've uh, been basically I've basically uh, had a, a tour uh, uh, tour all around here and uh, uh, shown exactly what everything is and there's so many things here that I've never seen before in my life and uh, I just started getting bitten by mosquitoes so this is the anti mosquito solution seems to work The chap that I recorded showing me uh, various plants that he's got growing around, uh, he invited me to stay at his home. His wife cooked us a meal of rice, um, pumpkin curry, uh, sag, achar, and a soybean curry as well. It was quite nice, quite simple, quite nice. Uh, he has a little bit of English. We kind of... Uh, communicated one way or another. In the first few weeks in the rural bit, everyone was inviting me around, but since I've got to the bits where there are hotels, 
um, I guess it's less common. Someone did mention actually in the in the uh, rural in the remote areas that they kind of have a system because if someone's traveling uh, and the only way to get around is by foot, then they kind of have a system where uh, you you kind of just rely on other people and kind of like a hotel. So you tend to not say no to someone looking for a place and then you expect the same in return if you're traveling as well so maybe that was kind of part of the culture around that part uh anyway so yeah really nice i've got my own little room it seems to be like kind of like a guest room it's outside ish there's no ele electricity here uh but i can show you around uh, maybe just their kind of st storeroom but it does have a bed in it there's my my spot for, for all my stuff um, there's the bed and they've got a little bit of a shrine thing going on like in some of the other houses uh, so there you go uh, slightly lower mileage because I was planning to get to the next village and get to a hotel uh, and I did have my plan but I bumped into someone who invited me around and I did not want to pass up on the opportunity of uh, of staying around someone's house. The house is 150 years old. Uh, it's, it's one of these that has a fire right in the middle. Um, very, very kind of old-fashioned, traditional. Really nice.